Thank you. Thank you very much. It was wonderful to begin with uh, Regina and Smiriti uh, and their exploration of how to hear the light. Um, I'm Alberto Ibarguin. I'm not one of the remarkable people you're going to hear today. Uh, so lower your expectations. I, w I, wanted, I want to tell you a little bit about how we've thought about this at, at night and how I've thought about it actually for most of my life. I'll tell you two quick stories. One from 1965, the first time I ever saw John Cage perform and met him. He, had, he came to Wesleyan where I was a student. He put uh, some metal sheets uh, thrusting out toward the, uh, toward the audience from the back of an old New England brownstone chapel. The program said this was a program in electronic music. I thought, music, I like music, I'll go here. And he put microphones along the side and stood in the back and rolled ball bearings down. And it went plink, plank, plink, plank. And I thought, Geez, if this is music, then there are no rules, except, except for the blinders we're willing to put on our own imagination. But that structure gave me the opportunity to think about music in a different way. 30 years later in the 90s, I, I met uh, Jerry Yang, the co-founder of Yahoo, and I asked him, who do you hire? Wh who do you, wh what, what's your favorite kind of employee as Yahoo was beginning to, to, uh, uh, to invent how we, used, uh, how we used internet? And he said, I thought he'd say engineers, I thought he might say, I don't know, mathematicians or scientists. He said philosophers. I said, philosophers, yes, because philosophers are the ones that have the most experience at connecting the dots, of seeing the, the relationship of things that appear to not have uh, a connection with, with the other. They are the ones who can really guide us where we, into the dark, where we really don't know uh, where we're going. And that's actually how we've thought about um, approaching these problems um, at Knight Foundation for the last almost tw almost uh, 20 years, wh whether from news challenges that had basically no rules, it was how to deliver news and information to locally, geogra to, to geographically defined communities on digital platforms, so people could have basic information. Art, art challenges that also have no, basically no rules. Art in Miami, what's your idea? We've got money, you've got ideas. Um, and that's how we've, that's how we've done uh, the, uh, the, the funding. And so this conference, this exploration um, that began today with Regina and Smiriti, this exploration of how to think about things uh, is an absolute natural for us. In all of this, you've got the, the structure the, is, is what allows us to be able to to make practical the, the, uh, the imagination, the findings that we uh, come up with. We need, we, in a world of division, I think we need balance, uh, we need more evidence, we need more science. Um, we've funded over the last five years about $90 million of social science research. In the world of Google, that's probably a committee. Uh, in, the world, <laughs> in the world of social science research, that's a lot of money. Uh, Designed, designed actually to, to uh, explore issues like mis and disinformation, privacy, antitrust, um, section 230. We never tell a researcher what to conclude. We are always looking for ways to disseminate the information produced. And in a sense that culminated yesterday in the announcement of a new institute at Georgetown University, the Knight Georgetown Institute, uh, that will attempt to translate scholarly research, uh, engage people, particularly uh, policy leaders, uh, in a discussion about ways in which we might be able to address um, these important issues. And it will be, not coincidentally, but it will be placed at the Georgetown campus that's about a five minute walk from, uh, from the Capitol. It's a, it's a collaboration with Georgetown University that very importantly has as its core mission something that we share, and that is the public good. We share with our friend and colleague, Alondra Nelson, uh, the former acting director of the White House Office of Science and Technology, the view that scholarship, to be most effective in a democracy, needs not only to be available, 
but it needs to be as much as possible accessible, and that's how the people can determine their best interest. Your appetite for scholarship, for knowledge, gives me hope, and history gives me confidence. We've been there before. I know this is gonna sound a little, maybe a little arcane, but think about Gutenberg. Before Gutenberg, there was order. The monks would illuminate a manuscript or two a year. Uh, the cardinal would put his imprimatur, it was always his. The, the cardinal would put his imprimatur, and there was truth. You knew what you were reading, you knew it was true. Then, then along comes Gutenberg, mechanizes the Chinese invention of the printing press, and all of a sudden, any Tom, Dick, or Martin Luther can do a mimeograph machine. <laughs> and all hell broke loose, and for, I don't know how many, for a hundred years, uh, people couldn't figure out. And the, and the lament was the volume. How can we deal with the volume? The, 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 the speed of information was absolutely stunning, shocking. And go through history and look at your, your favorite crisis, the Industrial Revolution, the Communications Revolution, now we have chat GPT on top of, uh, uh, on top of the, the, the digital revolution. Not everybody is like Tim Berners-Lee who did not take out a patent on the World Wide Web. We have to deal with the reality of commercial self-interest and we are here to talk about the public good. This is a balancing act. This is the real world and we want this conference uh, to make contributions to that public good like the Science Foundation, like Georgetown, like Nobel. Nothing could please us more at uh, Knight Foundation than to support your efforts. Many of you happen, we happen to work with to support your efforts toward the public good. I am thrilled you're here and we are really honored to sponsor this conference. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Alberto Ibarguen.